uh, just my little suggestion. So uh, I'm going to put it on speaker view myself so I can get a big, beautiful look at Sheila. Hi. <laughs> Isn't she the hottest thing? Oh my God. She's just, I just love you so much. Um, first of all, hi. Hi. How are you holding up in Long Island? I'm doing all right. You know, yeah. today's a sunny day. It rained a lot last night. And I, I've been gardening, so I'm tan or red. <laughs> nice. And, uh, you know, doing my thing. That's, that's yeah. all just. And just so these guys know, so you guys are still, as we talked about, you're in an area of the country where you're, are you able to go in and do anything in the office and ship and stuff like I, that? I can go in because I'm an online business and I can only have one person in the office. Okay. Um, but I've been actually, um, forwarding my orders to Muse Beauty, my distributor, because he it sells a certain type of um, sanitizer. So, so there was a time when I couldn't go into the office at all, and I forwarded online orders to them. Amazing. So it was, um, it was easier for me to keep the customer service level up by just forwarding um, any orders that came into the distributors. And we'll, we'll just work it out when this is all over, you know? <laughs> isn't, isn't that the way now though? Everyone's kind of like, let's just keep moving. Yeah, keep moving. yeah, yeah. You know? so, um, um, so when we talked about this session, you know, obviously you're the owner, uh, founder of Cat Cosmetics, great airbrush products. You also use other traditional products in your work. Um, and we had talked about you know, you may, if I can say so, you made a joke. You're like, well, if I'm going to do my own face, I better do like a makeup for people over 50. And I was like, I love it. Yeah. So I think so many of our clients in this, in this audience of the TPG uh, pro group, you know, we are working in bridal, we're working in personal services. We're working on, um, on at, well, we're doing makeup for an editor. We're doing makeup for people in their forties, fifties, sixties. So I think this is such a great session. Um, and I just had a couple of quick questions before you got, uh, before you get started with the makeup piece. Um, I feel like because you've worked in different realms, like photography and per, like live events, like a bride and you do to you like video, are there any things that you s can say are sort of super, super important elements of doing that sort of ageless beauty, like beauty for a woman over 50? that you think that people can take away even before you start doing your own? Because we're watching you on a monitor, we're seeing how you're doing it. But are there different things for each type of work? Um, well, the, the one common denominator, I think, when doing mature skin is that it has to be prepped properly. So um, prepping is, is something that every makeup artist should understand and should have a variety of products. I have my... Um, I have my skincare, so I pulled out the products that I'm going to use on myself, but I have a skincare kit with, you know, I don't know, maybe 20, 20 different products in it. Um, and not all mature skin is dry and wrinkled. Uh, some mature skin is oily and um, not dehydrated. It's, uh, it's really understanding what the skin looks like in front of you, what the client wants to look like. And if the client can't dictate the look, if you're doing camera makeup that has to be a specific way, then, then you just need to be able to prep that skin so that it's not going to interfere with um, the end result. And choose, you know, choose the right products with the right textures and ingredients. So. For instance, if I'm doing something that's typically, I mean, I, I come from the old school days where everything could be like no shine, matted out, lots of makeup. Things are different now. I see a lot of different types of glowy products on the skin when I'm looking at the news or, or you know, people in general. So I like the fact that that transitioned away from that heavy matte look, but there still is a lot of makeup on people's faces when I look at television. Um, and the only time makeup ever looks really natural to me when I'm watching a series or a show where you can't put a lot of makeup on the face and they have to be in a, a character type makeup. So um, for me, my bread and butter for years was bridal. And that can be scary to some people because you know that you're going to get the mother of the bride in there and you may even get the grandmother. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so you just have to really have a good a good collection of, of, of products in your skincare kit and then know which products to use them with. Okay. Are there I'll, any... talk about, I'll talk about that when I'm, when cool. I'm doing my own skin, I'll say what I'm using and why I'm using it. And then if, if anybody has a question about products, they can raise their hand. You can let them ask me and we'll engage and then we'll okay. just go back. 
Amazing. Awesome. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, listen, this is, we're, this is called Making Up with Sheila McKenna. So let's get Making Up with Sheila. I'm all in. Yay. Let's do it. Okay. Thank you, Michael. And, um, and thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm so happy. I really was happy at the beginning because everyone was talking because I would have just started crying because I miss everybody so much. And um, there are a few people that I texted with today um, just saying, you know, we had each other's numbers and can't wait to see you. So I'm really happy to see those faces as well. Um, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get started. I'm, I'm really not gonna waste a lot of time talking, but I will talk the entire time. So, um, and I can actually talk and do makeup at the same time. So uh, please, I love, I'm looking at the gallery view because I like to see everybody. I like to see acknowledgements, thumbs up, or if I ask a question, if everyone can just do their best donkey or not, uh, I'll see the heads moving. Because um, a lot of my makeup, I will have to use a mirror and not, not glasses and it'll be blurry for me. So at least I'll see blurry heads going like this or going like this. So <laughs> this has been really, I mean, I really do not enjoy doing videos. I don't like being in front of the camera. I like being behind the camera and it took a pandemic to get me to go out and do this. And, um, and I'm so happy that Michael asked me to do this. So of course I wanted to do um, makeup on mature skin, but I really wanted to be like, what if, this is what if scenario. What if you had somebody that said, I really want a dark smoky eye. And you're thinking, well, you know, she's old. She can't do that. I say, yes, you can. It depends on the age. I don't even think it depends on the age. I think it depends on how good you make the skin look. So I think anybody can have a dark smoky eye as long as their skin looks good. I think anyone can have any color on their eyes as long as their skin looks good. So it keeps going back to the skin. Um, I think if somebody wants glitter on their eyes, give them glitter if that makes them happy. After all, we're in the customer service business. We're here to make clients happy. And if it's not something where, like I said earlier, if it's for television or character makeup and you have the freedom to give the client what they want, you know, then, then give them what they want. You know, put that glitter on their eyes if grandma wants it. You know, if she feels all pretty and blingy with it on her eyes, give it to her. So, so I don't have any makeup on and I have a rash. There you go. I don't know what that is. But that popped up about a week ago. I think it's allergies. Um, the weather's been really weird. And, um, and I'm a little sunburned because I've been gardening a lot. And um, I guess I'm just getting more color. So I don't really know what color my, my skin is right now, but we'll get to that. So the first thing I like to do is my eyes. And um, after I'm done with my eyes, I'll clean up and then I'll uh, re-moisturize my skin. So. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to use is I, I always prep the eyes with a, with a cream, like a, an eyeshadow base. So I'm going to use the fixed cream in the lightest shade. That's going to make my eyelid um, all one color. And because I'm doing makeup on myself, I'm going to use my fingers. So um, <clears throat> otherwise I would be out and um, double dipping but this is this is mine so let me do this I will still scoop out because it's it's uh, out of my pro kit but I'll just use my fingers and um, the the fixed cream is a wax based um, cream so it kind of heats up when you put it on the skin and then Michael if you think I need to get closer or or farther away or if it looks blown out just just say so okay it looks good looks good to me Okay. So that's basically going to just make everything, you know, one nice, even color. I also have a mirror behind the, um, the computer so I can see from a distance as well. So I'll do a little bit of that too. <clears throat> now, because it's a cream, I have to uh, set it with a setting powder. So I'm going to tap into my Ket Set powder. You know, creams have to be set, otherwise they'll move in the crease. Now, this is my eyes. This is not my mother's eyes. My mother's eyes were very wrinkled, very hooded. I would never do a layer of fixed cream 
and powder and then eyeshadow on top. So we're talking about mature skin here. So when I have um, what I would call maybe a, a grandma's eyes, um, I feel like less is more on those eyes and the more product you put on it, the heavier and cakier it looks. So I would stay away from prepping it like that and just go right into it with um, a lot of <clears throat> maybe a, a strong emollient on the eyelid and then put the powder right on top. And those two formulas will kind of fuse and stay together. Unless of course she's oily and then you have to deal with it like that. But my mother had very wrinkled um, dry skin. So, um, so that's how I dealt with her skin. So now I have my eyes prepped. I am going to first create the shape that I want. So I usually <clears throat> start with neutral colors and I'll do my highlighting, my, my middle color, and my crease color. So it makes it three-dimensional. When you're, when you're doing a three-dimensional makeup, you need three stages of, of neutrals. So I'm going to tap into this beautiful Viseart neutral palette, go into the light color here, and just start right up here under my brow bone. And then, you know, after, after I look all glamorous, I'm going to go back outside and do some weeding. See, <laughs> see what the neighbor says. <laughs> now, if I also go a little too heavy with this, I'm not really concerned about it now because I do airbrush. And later when I'm doing a layer of something, I may just go over it. It, it all depends. Um, I don't typically do a really dark, heavy look on myself. So... Um, I'll see what my mood feels like when I, when I get to that stage. Sheila, quick question for you. So you, you mentioned before, you know, you were saying if somebody, if, if grandma wants glitter, um, you know, give her glitter, right? We're gonna find a way to do that. We're not gonna give her the way we might give a, a teenager glitter, but we're gonna find a way to give grandma something sparkly. Um, yep. Would you say that, like, what are some of the, let's say you were talking about your mom and that she had, a, a, you know, more crepey skin and a little bit more wrinkled. What are some of the textures that you find in traditional makeup first? And then when you get to airbrush, talk about that. What are some textures that you find are the, are the biggest mistakes people can make by using? Well, um, I just instinctually would stay away from frosted eyeshadows um, because that's just going to enhance all of the wrinkles and lines on her face. Um, and the, the, the the color, if you can imagine, I still have it, um, is MAC. The color is called Ho, if anybody can remember what Ho is. H-A-U-X, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Michael, I have, I have three pots of that. And that is my grandma color. It's like, um, it's like a mauve gray-ish kind of color. It's a great crease color for bridal, but it's a great lid color for mature skin. It's, it's matte. And, um, and it just has a little bit of color in it. So, so I do stay away from things that are very frosted. And if grandma wanted glitter, I would start out, I would put mattes on her eyes and then I would find a spot to put the glitter, whether it would be like a, like a liner, a little bit of liner or a little bling on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would probably figure something out like that. Yeah, cool, great, thanks. So I did my highlight. I did my crease color. That was uh, this color that I put in the crease right here. There's all the Viseart. Excuse me? Those are the Viseart palette. Which yeah. palette is that? Yes. Yeah. This is the um, neutral mattes. And um, I think it's the neutral mattes. Yes, neutral matte. We know our TPG pros love their Viseart. <laughs> uh, my room is so hot. I have to open up a window. Do you mind for a Not second? Not at all. Go for it. Okay. I didn't expect this. Isn't it funny that um, it's finally getting to a point where we can say, oh my God, it's getting so warm. <laughs> I know, the weather has been so freaky. Now, you know, now my the life- The longest spring of our lives. <laughs> Did that light me mess everything up? No, you're good. It's, it's, it's coming from the side, but it's fine. It's okay? Yeah. All right. It's giving us two different lighting, which is and nice. And you know what? I could be having a hot flash. And since, uh, you know, and this is what we deal with too. We deal with hot flashes. Yeah. And um, so because I'm having a hot flash, guess what I'm doing? 
A Andrea Kuharian says it's laughing because she's like, me too. Woo! And now I'm doing this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. All right. That'll go away. Um, oh, good. Now I need to do, um, so I said I was going to be doing um, a dark, smoky look on my eyes. So I've got my highlight. I've got my middle. My deep crease is going to be the dark color. So I'm not going to go ahead and put a dark color in here and then put black on my eyelid. The black will fade up. So I am going to go, I'm, I'm doing dark and smoky. I'm going right into this black. It's a fixed cream. It's black. If you don't have Ket Fix Creams, you can use any black cream. You can use black cream liner. Um, you know, anything, even a black liquid, just something that will um, grab makeup. So I'm gonna scoop a little out. And I'm going to take a brush that um, is not going to be too big. See the size of this brush? I, I'll be able to put the black exactly where it belongs because um, I don't want it to go above my crease. I want it to go right into the crease. So one of the things I also do when I'm doing makeup on people is I, I have them look at me while I'm doing their makeup. So this dark color doesn't go up when they raise their eyebrows. Of course, if they have um, Botox, maybe they're not doing this and my Botox all wore off now so look I got all those wrinkles my face is moving so I just take it right into the crease is that a good angle Michael is that good yeah. okay and I'm not going higher than the crease okay I think it's interesting because my, I have such like heavy, crepey, like I have such lids on, such hoods on my eyes that, you know, if I were, you couldn't even do that on me. So it's, how do you manage like for a look on someone who's, you know, I'm over 50 and if I wanted a smoky eye, I'm not James, I don't get to wear one. Um, but if I wanted to wear one and I couldn't get that, that lid doesn't really kind of come up for me. What's a good trick? on a like a hooded eye for that same kind of an effect well the so with the hooded eye um you this is when i have the client that's one of the reasons when i would have them look at me when i was doing their makeup because you don't want that black to go up too high so when they're when they're looking at me is when i map out exactly where it's going to go i put a little mark here a little mark here and then they can close their eyes and i don't go above that mark Okay. But I would, again, if it's, if it's a really hooded eye, um, I wouldn't go with black. I would go softer. So um, I, would, I would definitely use a cream and then put like a matte color, a, a, a darker matte color on top. But I wouldn't start with black. And usually with hooded eyes, too, the focus really needs to be on the lashes because you're not seeing the lid. So if you can make the lashes look spectacular, then that's the hooded part. That's just a that's just a bonus if you can peek through it as they as they make facial expressions. That's when you see the the lid and you don't see the lid. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Um. So, I'm I'm going for um, one of Rocky's colors. I'm going for this one right there. Oh, nice. That color. It's like, um, it's like a cranberry color. It's like a you can use the same brush. It doesn't matter now that this has black on it. <clears throat> why dirty another brush, right? So I'll load it up and I'll, uh, I'll tap it in. And kind of smudge it in. Anyone else have questions? I'd love to hear from anybody. It looks like Zach. Zach, do you have a question? I'm going to unmute you here. This is not Zach G, our, our, Zach, our, our, our other Zach. It's a new Zach. Zach D. Let's see if I can do that. Zach, are you, are you unmuted? Yeah, I'm unmuted. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Zach. Um, are those Cosette shadows that you're dipping into right now? 
Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was my question. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Always good to have a question you know the answer to, right? <laughs> oh, how, you know, it, I, I have no problem saying I don't know either. So, there you go. Uh, Angel, Angel, do you have a question? I'm going to unmute you. Angel, are you there? Hi, Michael. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Hi Angel. Hi. Uh, what, are you using the same brush that you used with the cream? Yes. And if so, what brush is that? This is the Eason brush. It's one of the Taclon ones. And um, I need to put my glasses on to give you the number. They have a couple in this series that are small, medium, and large. This one is a T41. So it's, Thank it's, you. Really, it's really a good size for uh, precision or for concealing. Um, I, like it. I like to use it with uh, liquids and creams. And the only reason why I, I didn't tap in, like dip into another brush is because it's already dirty and I'm just, you know. Sheila, is there any, if, because you're going from one, from a cream to a powder, is there any benefit in that, in having that, that yeah. Kitfex in the, on there? Yeah, so um, I'll show you. I'll do this. So here is, um, I'll, use, I'll use a brush for this. So here's what the eyeshadow looks like just by itself. Okay. Yeah. And then here's what it looks like on top of black. So it grabs the pigment, it makes it more intense, and then it makes it more like, um, like multi-dimensional. Okay. Great. So, you know, because it's a red that I chose, the, it's, it's turning it more into like, um, there's a little bit of purple underneath there because the red is mixing with the black. Got it. See that? Yeah, it's real a nice intensity to it. Yeah, so I like it. I like when I mix those two together that it turns into a reddish purple. Nice. Um, I'm going to take another question, then we'll take a pause while you're still working. Angela Melorn, let's see. This is un, un, doing the raised hand is new for me. I can't get, I can't figure, for some reason it's not doing it. So I'm going to talk for a second while you're. Yeah figuring that out. Um, I want to make my crease a little more intense. So I'm going to go back into the Viseart palette now. And I'm going to go back into this um, like taupey color that I started out with. But now I'm using a more precise <laughs> brush. And I'm just going to go right into that crease. And I always tap down on the outer corner first, and then work my way in to make my eyes look like more almond, but of course, if you're doing something editorial and it calls for, you know, darker colors in here, you would start in here. I, but, I think there's also, so, you know, we look at models like Carmen and we look at these beautiful Iris and these folks who are like in their 50s, 60s, 70s, who are getting really beautiful, dramatic looks in editorial and for like, these like celebrity looks. I think it's really cool to see like how you would create that. Um, Angela, I think I unmuted you. Are you unmuted, Angela? I, uh, is, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, what's your question for Sheila? Okay, perfect. Do you guys actually answer my question? I was wondering what brush you were using, Sheila. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry. Cool. Is that Angie Melhorn? It okay. is. <laughs> Hi, Hope Angie. Well. Miss you. Hi. Uh, yeah. Missed you at the makeup show. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here today. Me too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank okay. you. Um, and just so she, since, real quick, since she mentioned the makeup show, um, I was talking with Shelly and James yesterday. And as of now, everybody, the makeup show is planned to be um, in Houston uh, in August, as well as New York in August. So nice. updates, updates as they come, but nice. that's the plan for now. So fingers crossed we can make that happen. Can't wait to see everybody. Um, so back to you, Sheila. I smudged the black underneath <laughs> now, and I'm using a pencil brush. And I'll go back into that same color that I used on my lid. And I'll just start to smudge that here. And Is here. Is that the same, the same one you did the base with? No, I did. I used the pencil brush to put the black underneath my eye. Right. And now I'm using the same dirty brush to put the powder on. Okay. But it's the same, same black and same powder. 
Same bat, black, same powder, different brush. Okay, cool. Okay, so, so now at this point, you know, it's looking, I have to do this so I can see what I look like. You know, um, you know I, I like the shape. I like how smoky it is. Um, I can drag it out if I want, you know, just because now there's like some black in there, there's the powder on top. So it's, it'll, it'll move around enough for me to just create the shape that I like. And I don't want a sharp, look, I want, I want smoky. So, you know, sometimes I go for sharp when I do my cleanup and I have like a nice wing liner. Um, this one is going to be more smoky and I'm going to put black on the inside, but I do like to um, drag it down a little bit. So I'll do this. I have a, I have a glare. Oh, there we go. Good. Does that look I, I prefer to think of it as a, your spotlight. <laughs> I needed that air. <laughs> I uh, thought I was done with all that. <laughs> uh, we've got a, a question from Suzanne Sirik. Let me see if I can unmute you, Suzanne. Oh, I did it. Yay, Suzanne, are you there? I am. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. yeah. What's your question for Sheila? I just wanted to ask, because you were touching on, say, grandmothers or more um, wrinkled lids, would you still use that cream as a base? No, no, I wouldn't. Because when it's a really wrinkled lid, I feel like when you put too much product on, it makes it look cakey and like, like mortuary makeup, like it's too heavy. So what I would do is I would just make sure that the skin was moisturized. And then I would put a matte powder on top and the moisturizer right. and the matte powder will fuse together and become a little more intense. It'll stay put. And, um, and, and, uh, and what? Right. Stay put. You know, thanks, that, thanks. that's how I would, that's, that's, you know, I would stay away from these dark creams and, and primers for the eyelid on, on, on grandma. But it's, but, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I go was going to ask about primers because, you know, um, there's, you know, every time a, a retailer like a Sephora or an Ulta has like a, 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 a kick for a product, they become a thing, right? And we all know in the pro industry, we've been using primers in different ways for so long. Is there a, a particular type of primer that works better on, on an aged skin? I don't know if that's a nice term, but an older skin? Well, there's a couple of different types of primers. And to be honest, I'm totally biased to the products that work with the Ket products because that's what I have in my kit. So I can't use any primers that have silicone in them with the Ket products. They don't, they don't go together. My products are either water-based or wax-based and they just slide around. So the only primer that I have in my kit is um, the Nurturing Force Blot Out. Uh, and that's what I use for um, either blotting out oil control or if somebody, um, if I want the makeup to like last even longer, I'll use the Nurturing Force Blot Out underneath it. Um, and then the, Vincent Longo has a water-based um, primer that I also have in my kit. Um, but those are basically it. Usually when I'm prepping the skin, I, I don't typically use primers unless I have to. Uh, cream, and I'll show you how, to, how I do that on myself. And cool. the reason why I use the Fix Cream is because, um, because it's wax-based, it makes it waterproof. And because I'm still prone to having these hot flashes, but it's also good for women that are having hot flashes. The makeup won't break down with a layer of fixed cream underneath it. So, um, so I'm going to be doing that on myself today too. But I am I, when I whenever I do like a a full on glamorous makeup where I, I it, it, it it's full coverage, I always have a layer of fixed cream down first. Great. Now I'm just smudging black along the lash line, and. Um, and I'm keeping it smudgy. I'm not making it perfect, but I'll get a, um, I'll use a, a, an angle brush to just kind of smudge it a little more. Sheila, when, when people talk about the smoky eye, you know, you know, we joke that, you know, you could, I could put 20 makeup artists in front of a mirror and say, do a smoky eye on yourself and you're going to get 20 completely different eyes. Like a smoky eye is so specific to what someone envisions their smoky eye to be. Uh -huh. um, are, what are the elements that you feel make your smoky eye like the smoky eye? 
Well, in my mind, what, and that's a really good question, Michael, because we have to understand the definition of terms in order for us to all communicate properly. So if your definition of smoky is different than, than mine, then we're not going to come out with the same look. So mm -hmm. it's always really great to have people um, reference, you know, um, tear sheets, but they don't do tear sheets anymore. They'll, they'll probably pull something up on their phone. Um, but to me, the definition of something smoky is something that is nebulous and has gray or black in it. Okay. So it could be a light gray or it can be a black gray, but it has to be ne like, like a cloud. It can't be definitive. It has to be like poof, like a little smoky poof. Love it. It's great. And it can take on any shape, but... Um, you know, I, and I do know that when I've communicated with people, um, by the way, that was the Eason pencil. It's black on one side, and then it has this white shimmery um, side that I like to just go into the tear duct. Those with. are, first of all, our, our folks are loving those so much. <laughs> They're so amazing. Yeah, I like them. And I love their lips, too. Yeah. I love all of them. So, um, you know, I will see, I will have somebody say to me, I want a smoky look like I still do makeup on relatives for weddings or whatever. And then they'll show me a look that I consider contoured, where you have a, a highlight here, a crease, and then a light lid. That's contoured to me. That's not smoky. But the color looks like a smoky lavender or a smoky, you know, brown. Um, so it always is really good to just... Um, have visual references when you're doing this kind of stuff. That's smart, yeah. I never, ever, ever do this on somebody. Like, I, I would always just consult first, you know? Because it's heavy, it's dark, so. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a little bit in my brows. Just because when you have something this heavy on your eye, um, you know, this kind of disappears or, or looks unfinished. So I just want to get in there a little bit. Who's, um, whose liner is that? This is also Isom. I've, 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 from the, the pencils in my kit now are Isom and Makeup Forever. I, I, don't I like know if Alice is on with us, but she'll be happy to hear that. Excuse me. I don't know if Alice on is on with us, but if she uh -huh. does, she'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, take another question for you, Sheila, from okay. Vivi Tran. Let me see, Vivi, if I can uh, un unmute you. I did it, Ms. Tran. Yeah. Are you there? I am here. Hi. Hi. Thank you guys for doing this class today. Absolutely. Um, I had a question for Sheila regarding uh, the texture on eyelids and sometimes it can be a little droopy um, and how appropriate it is to kind of hold the skin taut without making the client feel like self-conscious about, about it. It's a great right. question. That is. So when I, when, when I, I'm going to refer back to when I ask the client to look at me while I'm doing their makeup. So um, if, if a client's eye is closed, it, it gets heavy. And I know any estheticians that are in the house will, will, will probably agree with this. So when your eyes are closed, the muscles are pulling the skin and it's more wrinkled than if your eye is open and looking down. So I, I, I really do a very little pulling and tugging if I have somebody just tilt their head back and look at me like this and then their eyelid flattens out. So if I'm trying to map out where the color, how high the color is going to go, I'll look straight at them. And like I said before, I'll map out, how, that's how high I want it to go right there on both eyes. And then I'll just have them tilt their head back and I'll, I'll fill it in and, and blend up that way. That's awesome. You really don't have to do a lot of um, flattening out and tugging when, you know, when, they, when their head is in that position. And I don't know, jo I, I, I defer to Joanne because I know that she's an esthetician or does a lot of skincare stuff, I think. Yeah. And, and um, I, I, I think that, you know, that's probably the most delicate way to do makeup. So you, and I also learned how to, I really learned how to work with brushes from the retail world because before all of this don't touch social distancing thing was going on, I used to be at a Mac counter doing makeup like this. Uh, you know, you, you do makeup on 10 people a day. I didn't want to touch them. So I really learned how to work with brushes and not to have a lot of physical contact with people. Right. 
just because I didn't want to get sick. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that question. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to go to another one. Allison has a question. Hi, Allison. Can you, can I hear you? Oh. I just used the Alcone makeup remover wipe to clean up underneath my eyes. There was a, a lot of red under there and that would just look like a bruise if I didn't clean that up now. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, there you go. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Allison. So I had a question. I know you were talking about um, hot flashes and things like that. And I know you said you would use like Ket, um, but what if, what would you do um, for somebody who was having a hot flash? Um, and would you like spray them with setting spray throughout? Would you like, what kind of tricks would you use to help to work with people that were having hot flashes? And if in fact you didn't have Ket cream or an airbrush, like, you know, what, what could you do? What could we do? Well, it's, um, so the, the, the hot flash thing, when I, when I have a layer of fixed cream down on the face, the, 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 the flash comes through, but the makeup doesn't move. So that's really, that's the no brainer for me. But the only thing I can do, and like you said, if you didn't have an airbrush, cause I do to pull this out and I cool people down with it. I, you know, it just, it works. Um, I would just, you just have to give it a minute or two to, to pass. It does pass. The, what it what what it ruins more is your hair than the makeup. Mm. It, when 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 you get hot in the scalp, it's it, it it just ruins the hair more than than the makeup. I feel. Yeah. Um, but it's something that you have to just let ride, <laughs> and keep them cool. <laughs> I th I think also too not that I am ever doing a woman over fifties makeup in a hotel room for um, a wedding. But you know, I think that a lot of people don't think about that when they're setting the temperature in their room and their space. And a lot of times, and as an educator, Sheila, and someone who has space, you know, it's always better to keep it cooler than warmer. And so if you've got a client who said, oh, I've been having my hot flashes, maybe it's a good advanced discussion to have and say, you know, make sure your room is really cool. I know it's gonna be uncomfortably cool, but it'll make it more the process better for you because then it's easier for you as the artist too, you know? Right, yeah. What are you okay. applying there? So this is the eye cream that I love for mature eyes. I have, I have a lot of wrinkles under my eyes. They're crepey. Um, and this is Kiehl's and it's the, um, it's a, it's the, uh, it's a cucumber. It says creamy eye treatment, but it has cucumber in it. Can you see that? Yeah. Is that the green one? It's green. Yeah. I love this. Um, and I also use it on my lip. So I have uh, former smoker's lips with some lines. They're very dry. I'm even dry around my nostrils from um, allergy medication. So I'll use this super emollient cream on my lips, under my nose, and under my eyes. Um, this is also really great Like if you have um, hungover or dehydrated brides. Uh, uh, bri bridesmaids, it just totally hydrates their face, you know, but we're not just talking bridal. Like I use this on Joan Jett. Um, she travels a lot. She's, she's on an airplane every other day. And uh, every time I see her, I, I always put this on her before I start her makeup. And then after I do a cleanup, I reapply it again. Um, for my skin, I use, um, I like Mario. I have a couple of different Mario um, products that I carry. I'll use any Mario that's like a moisture magnet. Um, they do, he does have one called Moisture Magic Magnet that has SPF 15 in it. And that one works really well under makeup. So if you have somebody that's gonna be outside, um, the Mario SPF 15 works really well. I don't do anything that's a treatment. Like, I, I'm not treating the skin, I'm prepping the skin. So I, if, if that can make sense to you, people need to treat their skin when they have time to give it treatments. But when you're doing makeup, you're just prepping it so the makeup looks really good on it. So if the key is to have really good looking skin, then, then you know, just use the products that will, will prep it properly for the finished look that you want. I'm gonna be using the B3 lip balm. I love this. We love it.
I did a, um, a special effects class for the makeup show. And um, they, uh, I used the B3. I was doing out of the kit with a, uh, out of the kit FX from a beauty makeup kit. And in order to create a bruise with um, eyeshadows, I put the B3 down first. And then I used the eyeshadows on top to turn them into creams. <laughs> it was awesome. It was a fun one. So I'm, I feel like all nice and hydrated, but- You look hydrated. And I tell you something, I'm not done. And that's because it's my skin. My skin, like, I will absorb all of this within 10 minutes, but this is what I used on my mother and it made her skin look so good, no matter what makeup I did on her. This Eucerin cream, it's the original healing cream. It comes in a mm -hmm. tub. And at, at CVS, you can get it in this three ounce travel size. So I have these in my makeup kit. Um, this puts a glow on the skin um, that, will, that will prevent the makeup from looking matte. So when you are doing mature skin, um, a, a glow looks more youthful, but I don't, no one really likes to look shiny or maybe me. I don't like to look shiny, but a glow looks nice. And the same thing for my mother, um, you know, her, her skin, I'm going to, my skin's going to look like hers when I get older. Cause I love the sun and she had a lot of sunspots. Some of them are going to get textured. Um, so I'll just be lubing up like this every time I, I, I do my makeup. <laughs> So now I'm gonna get onto my Fix Cream layer underneath. And, um, and my color should be R3. I'm not really sure because like I said, I've been in the sun. So I'll take a little out and just take a look and see um, how that looks. Oh, it's just uh, a little We have a light. question. Sheila, yeah. can I take another question while you're doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got Erica Lee, Coho Fitzgerald, Steinfeld, Miss Smith. It's a little inside joke there. Hi, Erica. Hi, thank you, you guys. Hello, Sheila. Hi, my, Erica. My question is actually regarding the Eucerin that you just shared. Uh -huh. You only, and I'm asking because just like you, I'm over 50. Um, your skin is fantastic. Is that part of your always skincare or is that just something you do to prep for makeup? No, this, this is my, this is my skincare. This is what I do every day. Um, but I have to tell you, it's really not fantastic. There's something weird that's happening with this camera because I'm getting feedback from people telling me that my skin looks really great. And I'm, and, and when we meet in person, I'll let you see it in person. And it's not that great. I have a lot of sun damage and, um, and a lot of uh, and a lot of wrinkles. So you know, I'm Irish and I love the sun. I don't see. I think she's being hard on herself though, because well, I know it's been a few years, but I saw her at I Artists in San Francisco face to face, and your skin was still. Epic. <laughs> she, so, she, she's fish. She's fish. Not, I know. Or she's I'm not fishing for compliments, in. Erica. It's yeah, not, not true. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Erica. Well, thank you. Um, I I'm gonna agree. I think that you have great skin. Uh, Cat B, you've got a question. Are you, I'll say I'm gonna unmute you. Let's see if I can do that. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Hi, Hi y'all. Um, I actually had a comment, and then I did have a question. Um, the comment was just on the hot flashes. Um, sometimes I think it's a good idea to take the retractable Oriental fans, um, so that you can just break those out. I mean, they're. I mean, you can even get them at the wig shops. I mean, they're just, you can get small ones or big ones, but they're fantastic and people really appreciate yeah. that because you're not using business cards or paper or their hand. So anyway, I just want to make that comment. And then the other thing sure. I have a question is in regards to, um, because we're all transitioning of how we're going to have to do things differently, particularly in COVID. And where I live, um, we actually can't even go back to business until the 25th as far as like in person. And so, um, like I'm like literally, cause you're talking about even airbrush and cause I'm thinking about how the virus is transmitted um, through the air and all of that. So is there anything particular um, that you're doing or that maybe that you're changing up or that you're making sure that your clients see you doing so that they know that, um, that you are taking all the necessary precautions, but even elevating it? 
I mean, so that they don't have to worry about you as an artist that, you know. That's a great question. That's a great question. Yeah, so for yeah. me personally, um, I, I only have a few clients that I do now because I primarily travel and teach and, and, um, and, and uh, brand awareness for Ket. But I do have a few clients and, uh, um, that I do regularly. And I am so sanitary. Like everything that I do is when, when I go to the client's house, for instance, as soon as I arrive, because I'm either doing it in a hotel room or at their home, the first thing I do after I say hello to them is I go and wash my hands. So the first thing before I do anything is wash my hands. Then I come back, I set up my makeup. Um, they're getting ready, they sit in the chair. I excuse myself, I go wash my hands a second time because I've just touched everything. This is my normal routine. Um, I also have um, brush, uh, brush sets that are designated to these specific clients. And I think that's probably gonna be something that may happen yeah. to people that have regular clients is you're gonna have to have separate brush sets, but I don't know. But I do have sp a specific brush sets for certain people, but then I do have all my other brushes. Um, so for the ones that I'm using their brushes on them, that's, it, it doesn't get any cleaner than that. I also use um, the, I, I happen to clean them with the Parian Spirit, but I also use um, the C3, uh, the, what's it called? C3 um, Bactro Kill. And, um, and Muse Beauty has that. And that is something that actually kills a whole bunch of the viruses including SARS and MERS and all the other ones. I, I actually got that from my house because my husband was working. He was the last to not work after, you know, so it went like food and healthcare people were the essentials and then he's in the buildings trade. So he was the last one to be told to stay home and now after, you know, and now he's the first one that went back. And all of the bleach was killing my, my cabinets. I mean, I was bleaching everything. I have wood cabinets in the kitchen. So I used the C3 on that. And you spray it and you leave it. Um, and you could do that on eyeshadows. And, and that formula eats the virus. But that's the best you can do. Um, yeah. The only thing that I think I may be adding to it is probably would be wearing a mask um, or wearing gloves. And I think that all depends on how comfortable the client is going to feel, right. you know. But I don't know. I, I, we're, we're all in this, you know. Kat, one of the, if I can jump in, Sheila, one of the things, um, you know, we've, we're lucky to work with a lot of different brands and have access to a lot of information. Jill from Makeup First and I were talking last week. I, like I said, I was talking with um, the folks at CNN and 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 Joanne in New Hampshire. And and I think that again, uh, to Kat's question, yeah, we don't know necessarily all the things that we're going to actually have to do. It's not going to be up to us if you have to wear a shield. It's not going to be up to us if you have to wear a mask. Period. You're, if you're going to do work, just like you had to be licensed to work on a bride but you kind of weren't sometimes and you were it was okay because the bride didn't care and it was on site but that i think that clients are going to be incredibly careful and really really anal about making sure that you're doing all the things that you have to do that they've heard you should do whether or not we agree with them all or not and i think erring on the side of um client care and that service level is the best thing to do the other thing i want to add is that um, and even again, to Sheila's point, these are things she's done forever. I hope all of you are super hygienic. One of the most important things you can do is let your clients see you take that brush set out, see you take your disposables out, see you sanitize your hands with hand sanitizer. Um, I want you to think about when you go to the dentist and they take out a full set of tools out of a piece of plastic. These are sanitized, they're wrapped up in plastic, they are on the thing at my dentist's office. She opens them in front of me and then uses them. If she didn't do that, I'd say, hold on, you're putting something in my mouth, I don't know how sanitized that is. Mm -hmm. So remember that to Kat's question, you know, what, what are you letting them see you do? What are the things you're making known? I think everything should be, I think you make sure, and again, there may be a point where you don't have to wear a mask or you don't have to wear, a shield, but I've said this a hundred times, there's gonna be PTSD from this thing for years, guys. So if your client, I think we have to get in the habit of saying to our client, here's what I do normally, and here's what's available for hygiene for you, and which, what would you like me to do? And then you also have to be comfortable knowing what are you okay to do? So I think there's a lot of pieces to it. 
We're gonna do sort of a panel and a, a little bit more information about this as we get a little closer to opening. Um, maybe in um, early June, mid June, I'm gonna try to put some folks together on a Zoom that we can sort of have as a free service, free session for everybody to talk about what the next steps are. So I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt you, Sheila, but I want to make sure I was able no, to say okay. we do have more information coming. And it's, and it's right on topic too. And one of the things that I forgot to mention was that after I wash my hands, before I get started, I use gel on my hands and maybe the client doesn't see me do this. And Michael, this is why it's relevant to what you just said, because if they didn't see me, they'll smell it. And I do this. And then yeah. they say, Oh, what's that? And I say, it's the hand sanitizer that I use. That's good. And, it, like and, that. it, and because it smells really nice, it's very calming. So, so that is actually one thing that I do deliberately so they see me. <laughs> I'm going to use some of my jowl right now. <laughs> I've got it on my desk. <laughs> and you know what? I gave my husband some, and he's, he's the best smelling construction worker there is out there. <laughs> awesome. So I, I combined my colors, which are O3 and R3. And I'm going to back bubble them. So, so I put fixed cream all over and then I set it with the Ket Set powder. It's the colorless powder. That's what I was doing while we were talking. Now I'm just gonna back bubble my two colors together. Spray it on a tissue before I go to my face. And then I'll, um, <clears throat> where's my mirror? Oh, here it is. <clears throat> so I'll start, um, you know, just doing a sheer layer. I already put one layer of makeup down, so I don't need a lot. Now I just need a little extra help where I have some hot spots or a nice sheer layer. And then I stipple where I need a little extra help. Now remember I said, you know, maybe the highlight on my brow bone is a little too bright. And now I can just do a little sheer pass over here. And that kind of takes it down a little bit. And I'll go in there and I'll do a little more over here where I have my new rash. And because I set the um, fixed cream with the setting powder, again, this powder and liquid fusion is happening and that's what makes it last longer. So I, I love to layer creams and powders or liquids and powders because they kind of act like their own primer when they, when they both fuse together. And if my goal is to use less products on the face, that's how I, that's how I do without the primer if I don't, you know, if I can. And Sheila, you're not, and, not, and I don't want to make this into an airbrush class, but you're not starting at the, at the hairline and working your way down through the whole face. You're adding that where you need it. Yeah, exactly. Like I just needed a little extra help over here. I mean, I am putting a sheer layer on top. So there is a sheer layer going all over the whole thing. But mm -hmm. because I do a layer of um, cream first, uh, this is just like a finishing powder or a finishing layer. It, it gives you that airbrushed look um, and it gives you a little more coverage. Um, I never just do airbrush. Like you said earlier, I'm somebody that does products together. Um, and if I was doing somebody else's makeup, I would probably airbrush a little on their eyes, but it's hard to do on yourself. So um, I just do the traditional products on myself. Um, so, and I, again, I like to, like to paint from light to dark. So like I did my eyes, I started light and ended up dark. I do the same thing with my face. I never really go light um, underneath my eyes, although today the, the concealer was a little lighter than usual. Um, so because I paint from light to dark, the next color is going to be a little darker. It's like a bronzer. I'm going to make myself look a little tan and, and I'll do a little sculpting. So, um, so for this part, because I have uh, gray hair, I have to cover it. Otherwise I will get um, overspray in the hairline. So I'll just do this. And if I'm doing a client, I generally do, I usually take a puff and I just 
block out with the puff like this around the face. But you know, it's me. I'll just do this. And, um, and I'll contour my nose. So I'll basically just shade a little here and a little here and I'll leave the color in the front here. I mean the highlight in the front there. And then sometimes I'll take this bronzer color and just go a little into over the eyeshadow, like in the crease here a little bit. Um, and sometimes I'll even do this. I'll like bring this out a little bit, watch this. just out into the temple a little. So this is basically like stippling some shadow out. I'm gonna look too hot for my uh, gardening. I was like, you look so hot right now, woo, honey. Like, what is that? My, my final <laughs> layer, I'm gonna put a little water in here because the color that I want, the last color that I want to be on top of this is um is a shimmery pink i'm going for the shimmer it's not frosted it's it's like uh glowy got it and you just that's just you're not you're just cleaning out the air to brush a little bit with that yeah sorry you couldn't see that so basically what i do is i just put i i put a little water in it i do a quick back bubble i spray it and i dump it it's because the products are water-based it it cleans out really easily I'm gonna jump on uh, You know, I don't make it absolutely spotless because I know that the air will push out the old color. So I've got I'll a question from Pauline, if that's okay. Hi, yeah. Pauline. Can you? Did I unmute you? Okay. I did not. I'm gonna try again. Let's see if I did that. I don't know why it's not working. I'm gonna I pause one more time. You go ahead. I'm going to try to find Pauline so I can unmute her. Okay. I think I unmuted myself. Oh, you did. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Perfect. Much easier than, than me. Um, so quick question for Sheila. So I am following along. I'm following along um, DIY bathroom makeup look. So I chose to do my eye similar to what she's doing, but I'm doing it in browns. So I'm using the... Um, the Muse brown gold pencil and nice. um, did that smoky all across my lower lid. I, and it was um, different to do it reverse of what I normally do. So I followed your, you know, light to dark. So question, the color that you used of um, Rockies on your lid over the black, what would you recommend? If, um, I'm doing it in a dark brown. So what kind of color would you pop there? Well, anything that would be um, like a like a um, a copper or gold, because the black or the brown is going to make it look darker. So you want to go bright. Uh, okay. I mean, you can choose a dark color too, but um, you know, I would go with something light and see what it creates. Okay, so that's kind of what I did. Um, I did kind of a goldy brown. Oh, cool! I'll unblock myself so you can see Michael for a minute. <laughs> Let me see. Because I have my pajamas on still. Hold on. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, it's, it's 10, it's, it was 11 o'clock. You really couldn't get dressed? Normally I am. Oh, let me see if I could get to some light. Let's mm. see. That looks great. <laughs> you had some, wait, you're dark again. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's a pretty color. It was fun. Fun That's to do something color. different. Cool. Thank now, you. Now you have to go do yard work like Sheila's gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go through the drive-through car wash and I'm gonna mesmerize the guys in line. <laughs> well, let's hope so. Also, thanks. That looks great. Good job, Pauline. Thanks. So I'm basically airbrushing a color now. Um, it's uh, it's called rose gold, and um, and it's one of the liquid metals that you can paint on. And when you paint it on, it looks really intense. But when you airbrush it on, you get that nice little rose, yeah. rosy goldy glow that I like. That's my Dita. Ooh, it's oh, it's nice. Maybe, maybe well, I'll do who, a little who just on, 
I'm going to go, uh, we've got a Brenda. Let's see if I can, Brenda, you can unmute yourself if you can. Hi guys. Thank Hi. you. Hi Brenda Garcia. Um, my question, I want to go to a little, uh, go backwards a little bit to, um, the skin prep. Yeah. If you had, um, a client like, so, I mean, we'll go to like mother of the bride, but like, just because I'm thinking being Latin, a lot of, um, the people that I work with will have like oilier skin, even in their being, being older. Yeah. And you then skip the use of them, um, when you came at that point for them or? Oh, yeah. Important? Yeah. So, um, I guess, well, we, I mentioned it earlier, but I, I will definitely say it again. Um, you have to you have to use a product that that's going to be good for your client's skin. And if you have clients that have that have oily skin, do not use Eucerin on them at all. That is strictly for people that are old, wrinkled, and dehydrated. And when I say old, I mean like in their 80s, like they're mm. they're old. Um, and if you have uh, primarily Hispanic clients, um, from my experience, the skin is is not very wrinkled. It's, um, it's very healthy, like strong, versatile skin. Um, and if it is oily, I would use Nurturing Force Blot Out on, on, the, on that skin, just because that is such a great product for, um, for grabbing makeup and, and holding it in place for a very long time. Okay, because I wasn't sure if maybe you would say then, um, because of the, like, I mean, just looking at how much that, that gave you a glow there, if maybe you would say powdering more or like just still because it's older skin, try to avoid so much powder. Well, not if it's oily skin, you have to do what you have to do to, to, to make the makeup stay. So mm -hmm. when I refer to, you know, the Eucerin cream and then it's so emollient that I can still look like I have a glow, even though I've just done two layers of makeup and two layers of powder. My makeup's not going to go anywhere. I can touch it and it's not lifting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's all contingent upon the client's skin. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brenda. I'm going to take a question from Zach again. Let me see. Zach, if I don't unmute you, you can unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself, Zach? Unmuted. Thank you. Awesome. What's your question, Zach? So um, first, what mascara are you using right now? This is it, Superhero. Okay. Um, so for airbrush, for starters, what airbrush would you recommend and, you know, traveling with a compressor and stuff? Like, how does that work? If you're going on well, of course, I'm going to recommend Ket. Um, and I have two compressors. One is the Ket Jet. This is, this is what us? I'm using. This okay. is the Ket Jet number one. Um, but it has, uh, it has an auto shut off feature. So when I'm not using it, it shuts off. So I like this one um, just because it's less noise. It weighs a pound. It can go, um, you can do, you can even, it, it, so if we're going to get into technical parts of um, compressors and what they, what they do, it goes from zero to 30 PSI, but you can't paint a car with it. It all is contingent upon the airbrush that you use. So the airbrushes that I use are ones that only provide between eight and 15 PSI, because you really don't want to do makeup with something that puts more pressure like that than that on your face. So, um, so it's, uh, it's, it's small enough to travel. It, it fits into an Esom bag, and then I just throw it right in my luggage. And it's also um, compatible internationally. The voltage goes from 110 to 240, so the only thing that you need is a plug adapter to plug it in. But then right. I also have what's called a mini jet, and the mini jet you half it does it, it takes twice as long so so for instance let, we'll talk about liters per minute which i think is more important than psi a liters per minute is how much liquid can come out in how much time and this will give you 12 liters per minute which means it's kind of fast and the mini jet this is this is the mini jet it's a small one this one will give you seven liters per minute so you'll still get your makeup done fast but it just takes a little longer with the mini and that doesn't have auto shut off but it's not longer like five, like five minutes to 20 minutes. It's no. five minutes to eight minutes, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Awesome. But I just really prefer the, um, the catch up because of the auto shut off. Um, and it also has a dial so I can dial it up or down. So it has, Great. it's a more pro, 
Pro one, where the mini um, is a good starter one. You know, okay. they have a lifespan. Um, and, uh, and when they expire, you have to get another one. So I just always think that you should, if you're going to be a pro, you should get the pro. But some people can't afford it, so they get the mini first. And the pro um, comes with two airbrushes? No, everything is at Ket is sold a la carte. So you put together your, if you want the point, point 0.4 airbrush, this one has a larger nozzle. This is the one that I use for tattoo coverage. And then this is the one that I use for makeup, for beauty makeup. Okay. Um, thanks, Zach. Thanks. Um, I'm going to try to mute you again, but let me see. Um, oh, I can mute people. I just can't unmute them all. Sheila, do you mind if I mention your special thing you're going to do for our folks who are on with yeah, us today no, since we're talking about it? Yes. So um, we were talking, and, and Sheila, they don't, um, at Kat, they don't normally aren't able to offer a discount on any of the equipment, but you get, what's the normal pro discount? 30%? Yes, the normal pro discount's 30% off of Ket makeup. Right. And so instead of just that as an offer for anybody who's with us today, Sheila's doing an additional 20% on top of that. So you get your 30% off makeup, 20% off on top of that. And also for this one time only, <laughs> Sheila is awesome. Um, you get 20% off equipment also. Right. So, so if anybody... So, so that 20% will take 20% off of whatever is in your cart, whether it's makeup or equipment. Awesome. And the, the code for that, and do not share that with your friends and family, this is for you guys, because she loves you, is CREATE20. And that's the number two zero. So CREATE20. And you can message me or Kenya if you don't remember that or you didn't write it down. Uh, and we know that people aren't out there doing a lot of work or spending a lot of money right now. But what Sheila said was, that, but for those who need to regroup and need to kind of get their stuff together, I want to be able to offer them a little special something. And I said that was very generous. So thank you. Um, also, what are you Michael, doing for if, if there's uh, anyone what, you know, listening that has not registered with us as a pro, anyone that's in the powder group always is qualifies for 30% off. So if you haven't created an account um, at Ket yet, and you do that first, and then you use your 20% your off, you'll be getting 50% off of the makeup and 20% off of equipment. So it's- So you know what we can do? Um, we'll, if it's okay. So, hey guys, I want you to hear me for one minute. If anybody who's on our session right now um, does not want me to forward your email address to Sheila so she can set you up with a pro account in the next day or two, uh, is, can you do that on your end if I send you their emails? I can do that, yes. Okay. All right, so I'll do that. So if anybody doesn't want me to do that, message Kenya by tonight. Uh, I won't get to it till um, the weekend anyway. So just email Kenya and say, please do not offer me an amazing free membership to Sheila's pro program. Um, <laughs> awesome, and, thank and you for Michael, that discount. And, and then what I'll do on Monday is when I'll do all of them at once. I'll get them okay, all cool. registered on Monday. And then if people shop on Tuesday, they'll get the discounts after cool. that. Amazing. Perfect. So you can go online and check out our stuff, but don't buy till you get your program discount. Exactly. Um, I'm going to take one more. Well, we got a couple. I, I promised Sheila only an hour, so we're a little over. Can we take another quick question? Yeah. I've got Marie Lejeune. Let's see if I can unmute you. Marie, can you unmute yourself? Um, Michael, I think you need to do the slow mo. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> Hot. You look amazing. Thank you. Amazing. That, <laughs> I love it. Marie, what's your question for Sheila? Yeah, so my question is regarding dark circle. Older women, you know, we, I mean, you know what I mean? So what, how do you uh, deal with that? Good question. So, do you use airbrush or do you use um, traditional makeup? Yeah. So um, there's, there's two sections of the face that I don't airbrush. I don't airbrush under the eyes and I don't airbrush under the nose. So, so airbrush is off the plate when it comes to dark circles for me. Um, and that's because when you close your eyes, the skin gets wrinkled. And when you open your eyes, it looks more aged. So I don't airbrush underneath the eyes. So dark circles, uh, now we have to go to definitions. Is it, is, it, is it dark because it's hollowed in or is it dark because it's discolored? So mm -hmm. if it's dark because it's discolored, you could use um, 
a product that has like a peach or a salmon or an orange undertone to it, and that will generally neutralize the darkness underneath the eyes. But if it's dark because it's hollow, then you can go with a lighter, you know, foundation or concealer color that will make it look brighter in, um, in photographs. But what I've learned is that I don't like the creams. So the fixed cream that I use on myself, I don't like the fixed creams on um, older skin because that makes it look aged. I like liquids. Wow. So I'll either use one of the liquids if I have the right color, or I'll use like a, you know, I have some MAC concealers, some liquid concealers um, in my kit if the, if the kit isn't working. You know, everybody's different. So there's no one cookie cutter mold for it. What you have to have is a couple of options in your kit. So, you, so you'll be able to give everybody a little bit of what they need. Awesome. Sheila, do you have a few minutes for a couple more questions? Uh, Michael, absolutely. Okay, awesome. So I am going to, and guys, we know we took longer than we said. So if you have to leave us, um, we loved having you. Thank you. But if you can hang out, we're going to take, I'm going to take three more questions I've got queued up. And first one is from Jackie Arboleda. Jackie, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Sheila, your makeup looks great. So my, my question is, um, are you going to be doing any kind of um, airbrush workshop, like uh, basics, how to coming up with, with Michael or on your page? Um, I don't, I don't have anything on the schedule yet. I would love to do something with Michael if he wants to put something to, together. Um, I, I, I don't have a schedule up right now. It's everything's up in the air. So, um, so I don't have an answer to that. Well, I can, well, since, wait, since Sheila just said, if Michael wants to, I can answer Jackie's question and say, yes, we'll be doing a Sheila McKenna basic workshop. Um, the other thing I'm going to share with you guys is that we have our, our presenters and all these folks have been super generous and we are offering, um, as you guys know, we've got 20 free programs. We've got a bunch of other free programs coming up too, but there is going to be a point um, as we go into June, into July, we're going to start introducing paid for programming that is also online. Very good prices. We're going to be doing really inexpensive stuff over the summer months to sort of support. It's, we're calling it the summer of support. Um, you guys supporting us and the artist presenters and us supporting you. So it's going to be a really nice uh, collection. And I hadn't yet pitched it to her. So thank you, Jackie. <laughs> uh, you all heard her say yes, right? Yes. yes. You all heard her say yes. Awesome. Yeah, so I'll talk great. to you guys. We'll talk about that. I would awesome. love Thanks, to Jackie. Them. Thank you. And it wasn't a pit. I didn't even put her in there to say that, Sheila. So um, <laughs> I'm going to, uh, let's see if I can mute. Thanks, Jackie. <laughs> and then I'm going to take, oh, we have a long distance uh, message from my love, Onarina in Paris. Hi, Onarina. Oh, bonjour. <laughs> I believe it's bonsoir now, isn't it? Oh, it's 9.20 p.m., yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question for Sheila, babe? Uh, so Sheila, I was going to ask about under eyes and then somebody else addressed it, but I was thinking um, about your powders, about your colored powders. And since you've developed the product, do you have any tips and tricks of how you use those powders and how you would apply them on more mature skin? Or would you even go to those powders for that? There they are. <laughs> These, so thank you. Thank you, Onorina. Um, just so I can uh, show everybody. This is, so there's a, there's a light and a, and a deep palette. So this is light to, you know, that's the light palette. This, this is the deep palette. So I don't, I don't use these on myself, so I didn't pull them out. Um, these are shea butter infused powders. So you can use this on any skin te texture type, whatever it is. It's going to look gorgeous. It's going to look flawless. Focus filter on your face, and I know that if um, Brooke, if I could see Brooke's face shake, she was part of she was part of the prototypes when I did this, and I brought them to the show, and she took a picture of herself and said, "I look like I have a filter on," and I didn't. It was just a selfie that I took. So it's because of the shea butter infused mica that makes it look really creamy. So Onarina, you could use it on anybody. The only thing that I would do is choose your tool. So if you're using a sponge, it's going to go on heavy. If you want to use it as a finishing powder, use something that's light. Um, 
you know, I like it as a, a touch up powder. Like if somebody blows their nose, you can go in and, and touch something up if, if it comes off like for, for on television. But there's also a couple of pros um, that are using this. And, and I, I say unofficially because they're working on celebrities. So I can't, they can't endorse it. Um, but Wendy Miyake is one of them and, and Ashanta Sheriff is the other. And, and they're using these, the darker palette as bronzers on their, their clients. So, um, so you can use them as a finishing powder or powder foundation or as a bronzer. But, um, you know, it looks, it looks as, like I said on Brooke, I used it as a powder foundation on her and she, she really liked how it looked when I was making them. So thank awesome. you. Thanks. Thank you, Sheila. Thanks, Onorina. Um, and our last questions I'm going to take is from Brandon. Brandon, can you unmute yourself? Let me see if I can do it. Oh. Hello. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Michael. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Brandon. <clears throat> so thank you so much for doing this class. I really appreciate it. Um, I haven't had the pleasure to meet you, Sheila, so I wanted to ask you really quickly. I know that we're at the end of the class, but I wanted to ask you what inspired you to create Cat? Oh, um, I, uh, I can't, it wasn't a plan. It, it, um, I, I was always uh, somebody who made what I needed if I couldn't buy it. So, um, and I took traditional products and used them in non-traditional ways. So when I found myself uh, falling in love with the art of airbrush. I took an airbrush class with the guys that paint motorcycles. I learned how to do it artistically, um, not like as a makeup, but more as in, in actual painting. Um, I just, it just lit a fire under me and I wanted to airbrush everything. And I was working with Michael at Mac at the time. And, uh, and I said, Michael, do you, do you think, do, you know, he was like my boss. I was like, Michael, do you think that uh, Mac will want to make a makeup? And he said, I don't know, put it in a proposal. And I didn't even know how to do that. And I just like, you know, just went on and did it myself. <laughs> as, as an entrepreneur does. You know, and it, was, and it wasn't that easy. I went to Toys R Us. I bought a Toys R Us science kit. I went and I bought water and glycerin and pigments. And I really, you know, worked very hard at creating you know, uh, a ratio of water and glycerin that I liked. And then I found a lab that would do it for me. So it wasn't just like that. Um, it was a labor of love. Awesome. Great question, Brandon. And um, I was going to make that our last question, but I don't know, this, this lady who just doesn't, she always wants to have something to say, has a question. So I figured since she's teaching on Sunday, I got to let her talk. So, so I'm going to unmute Joanne McDonough. Joanne's going to be our last question for the day. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Um, I just had a quick question for Sheila. Are those palettes, the new powders and the, and the cat fixes, um, the fix cream, are they refillable? Yes. Yay! You know what, Joanne? My heart is with the pro. It always was. It always will be. It's never, you know, I'm never focusing on the do-it-yourself-at-home crowd. So, um, so my goal is to make it uh, user friendly for the artist, but also to look good on the on the client. I mean, of course, if people that are at home want to do the, the makeup, you know, airbrush makeup on themselves, that's fine. But it's I, I prefer people to go to professionals for it, and that's why I make these all refillable. So, you know, you refill your your most popular colors. So, put a little awesome. hydrocortisone on your rash. Oh, okay. It's you know from I, it's I, from gardening. Okay. You probably touched your face, you know. Yeah. yeah. Hydrocortisone. Mute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I love the power of the mute. All right, listen, guys, we, I've, I've kept Sheila longer than I asked her for. Thank you, Sheila. You are my heart. And thank you for doing such a great session. And thank you all for being with us. Wait, can I um, wait, don't we have, go anywhere? Can I take a picture of the screen? Yeah, yeah. I want to take a picture. Okay. Oh. I wish they'd make it so you could have more than just 25 on a screen, but soon you'd have like 100 so you could see everybody Jeez. at once. Jeez. <laughs> Thank you. Thank All right, you, guys. We are, I, I hope we're going to see lots of you guys on Sunday with Joanne. Sheila, join us on Sunday if you can make it. That'll be a lot of fun to have you. Thank, Thank you guys you. for being Thank here. You Bye, Thank you, Sheila. Love you. Bye. Love you too.